Hello friends, welcome to my channel Amrita's World. Friends, in my previous lectures, I have discussed various topics on Python installation, Python fundamentals, like what are tokens, uh, keywords, identifiers, punctuators, different types of literals and operators. I have also mentioned about different components of Python program like expression, statement, functions, and so on. Now, it's the high time, friends, that whatever we have learned, we see the practical implementation of it through Python coding. Before I begin, I hope those who are regularly watching my video have already subscribed to my channel. And if you have not yet done, and if you think that my videos are helpful to learn Python programming, then please do subscribe to my channel, Amrita's World. Click on the bell icon to get further notification. And please do not forget to like. So what are we waiting for? No more talking. Let's start coding. Friends, I have explained in my second lecture that how to install Python on Windows operating system. And also we know that we can work with Python in two modes, that is interactive mode and script mode. Today I would like to show you that how we can work with interactive mode in Python. Most of the time it happens that we understand the program basics but we don't understand how to start a program. In my teaching career, over these years, I've experienced that most of the students face difficulties in constructing a program. They are understanding the concept, but they don't know how to start. So today, I would like to show you from the beginning that how you should start writing a program. We'll have to always remember about IPO cycle, that is, Input, process, output. I have spoken about this IPO cycle in my third lecture. The link I will again share at the end of my video uh, as an I button of my YouTube channel. So let us start with some simple, pro simple program. That is the program to obtain that sum of three integer numbers. Okay. So first, we are starting with a comment as we already know that uh, the Python programs has some components. So always when we are writing a program, we should start with a comment. So by looking at the comment, the user will know that that program is all about of what topic. So I am writing here program to obtain to obtain three inputs or three numbers and find their sum. So this is the comment. So I have just now mentioned that you have to always think about input process output. So what will be the inputs to find out sum of three numbers? Of course, the three numbers. So let us start. So we also know that variable is a container which stores value. So to store the value in the memory of computer, we'll have to take help of variables. So I give the name of the first variable that is num1. So I take input function, I use input function. Input function is a function in Python, is a built-in function in Python, which will accept values from the user. So here, I use the input function, enter the first number. Okay. So I have written this inside the double quotes. So whatever I've written inside the double quotes, it will be printed as it is. Now Python interpreter will in interpret any input as string by default. But then we'll have to work with the numbers. So we'll have to convert this value to integer. How we can do so? 
by using the in function. So whatever input will be given here, that will be converted to integer. Now, once I press enter key, I can see that it is asking for entering the first number. So I enter here maybe 12. Then I'll just copy the first code and I change the value to, or sorry, the name of the variable as num2. So now I change here, enter the second number. So I enter value, say for example, 15 maybe. Then next I again copy and paste the code and I just simply change the name of the variable as num3 because we need to have unique identifier in our program that also we have learned. So now enter the third number. So now I enter maybe 45. So inputs are over. I have given inputs for three numbers. Now what I have to do? I have to do the processing part of it. So what will be the processing part? Adding, adding of three numbers. So then again, after adding, we'll have to store it in a variable. So then also I'll have to take help of one variable. So I give the name of the variable, a meaningful name, that is sum. Now sum equal, just like maths, we'll write sum equal num1 plus num2 plus num3. So I've added the numbers now. Will it display the output? No, until unless we instruct Python interpreter by using the print function. That is again another built-in function for displaying output on the screen. So I can simply just print the value of the variable sum just like this, like 72, or I can display using some useful message to the user. So maybe the sum of sum of three numbers. Okay. So I just in the quotes and then give comma C here between the user message and the variable. We need to use one comma here. Now see what will be the output sum of three numbers 72. Wherever comma is displayed there one space is being displayed on the screen. So this is the way we can write a very simple program giving input then process and then the output. I also like to show another program, very simple program. I think now you all will be able to write program yourself. So let us try program maybe to obtain length and breadth of a rectangle rectangle and find its area that is the program now yes you are right what you have to do you have to take the input what input should be given so that you can find out the area for a rectangle of course it should be length and breadth so now length and breadth of a rectangle it can be either integer whole number or it can be of float type. What is float type? Which can have fractional values. So here I take one meaningful name of the variable that is identifier. I take it as now I convert into float in this time because length and breadth can have decimal values. So now I take again input function and I write enter the length of rectangle so here it is now i'll have to close it with the two parentheses because one for input function one another for float function now again it is asking for enter the length of the rectangle i can give some values with decimal point now i again copy this code and here I just change the variable that is breadth, then enter the length, breadth of rectangle, I should change it. Okay, so again, I press enter key. So enter the breadth of the rectangle, say for example, it is 34.5. Now, 
now we need to find now inputs are over so we'll have to do the processing how we need to do the processing so we can store that length into breadth in our variable area because the formula of finding out the area of rectangle is length into breadth so area equal length into sorry into breadth so now it is stored but then we'll have to display the value so we can write print area so it will display the value that is 1573.2 so hope you have understood now the how to construct a very simple program so by the example of this two programs we can recollect whatever we have learned in our previous lectures like we have the concept of variable now it's a container which can store a value then we have this equal that is assignment operator for assigning the values then what all, all things we have learned like how we can write a simple program using ipo cycle that is input process and output so in this way uh, friends i'll be showing many more programs i've just started with a very simple program so hope you have understood how to construct a program and of course at the end i would like to expect that you subscribe my channel yes if you like it and then do not forget to click on the bell icon so that you get the notification and of course do not forget to like my channel thank you for watching my video thank you so much